All right, let's go to Paris in the Free State now, where a familiar name around an unfinished state project has cropped up once again. A correctional services facility has not been finished, even though the contractor, Edwin Sodi, was paid millions. Public Works and Infrastructure Minister Sifle Zikalala visited the centre in Paris today. Uh, Paris, rather. Ian says Moloko Moloto is following the story and he joins us now in studio. So, Moloko, you were with the minister. What did the minister say about this project? Why did it grind to a halt? Hello, Sally Badet. Well, Minister Sifle Zikalala is on a tour to make an assessment of uh, projects that are incomplete. In his words, he says that particular prison facility is one of many other projects that have not been completed. In this case, the department paid 130 million rent already to the contractor. It's not been completed, and in order to complete it, the department says an additional 50 million rent would be required. Now, the the money has been paid. We, 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 we've been there. We have seen that. Luckily, luckily for them, the, the, the infrastructure has not been dilapidated because of the, that fence uh, that has fenced up the facility. It's not easy mm. for scavengers to go in there. So they, they, there won't be much work. Uh, of course, it will cost an extra money. Now, the minister was saying, look, whoever it is, because, as you said, Edwin Sodi is the man behind that particular uh, contract. The minister is saying he's going to terminate that particular contract and efforts are underway to make sure that they recover part of the money that he received. Maybe we can listen to Minister Sigalala. Whoever was the owner of the company, we have terminated and we are going to deal with that, including ensuring that penalties are enforced and the guarantee, uh, the contract guarantee, uh, is uh, recouped back to the department. All right. So we are going to ensure that all department, all projects, irrespective of who is involved or who is the uh, contractor, we are going to ensure that those projects are implemented. If the contractor that is failing, if the contractor is failing, we will have to enforce consequence management. So. Edwin Sodi is the contractor. Edwin Sodi of Blackhead Consulting. His name has cropped up a number of times, most recently around the Royval water treatment plant yeah. in Hammond's Kraal. Again, that project stalled. Just yeah. remind us a little bit more yeah. of who Edwin Sodi is. Well, Edwin Sodi is the ANC benefactor. And uh, as we were there, some people were today jokingly saying that this man seemingly has platinum citizenship because he's so lucky to get all this multi-million rent contract. He got this one. Um, he got paid 130 million rent and the work is incomplete. In Hammond's Graal, the refurbishment of the Royal Water Treatment Plant, the contract, the company there was uh, given 295 million rent. The work has not been done. Sadly, people have died there because they still don't have access to water. And you go to the Free State again, the asbestos case. His company was given a 255 million rent contract to remove asbestos from the roof, or roofs of uh, poor people's houses. Not, not much. That was about ten years ago done. now, wasn't it? Y yes. Yes. During the tenure of Ace Mahashule, when he was still premier, there we know he, Sodi, and Ace Mahashule and other people are now in the High Court. The trial might like may, may start sometime in uh, August, and they tried. There's two, Ace Mahashule and Edwin Sodi. They tried to stop this prosecution. They went to the Supreme Court of Appeal. It dismissed their case. So this is one man who is um, a, a, a common denominator in this multi-million rent contract. And, of course, we are hoping that as the matter is now going to court, somebody will be held accountable. Absolutely. Um, and then, of course, uh, if, if we go back to what's happened in Paris with this prison contract, uh, Edwin Saudi, it seems, got a lot of money, but subcontractors and sort of casual day workers were just not paid. You spoke to one of them. Tell us more. No, indeed. And when you speak to the minister to say what are the reasons why this particular f project was not concluded, he says, we are told that uh, they were disturbed by COVID, but so did many other people were disturbed by COVID. What happened when the, the restrictions ended? Why didn't he con conclude? Because the department says we paid him and we still want some of the money we paid from him. 
And there are people who are subcontracted in the process. But before that, the Department of Correctional Services is saying we have been inconvenienced enormously because we had budgeted. Remember, that prison facility was upgraded from 87 beds to now 287 beds. In other words, they were going to hire more people. They, a lot of things were now, are now, have now been thrown asunder. What about the people, poor people who were working there? A subcontractor we spoke to says, look, I have spent uh, money here. In fact, they have left me with debt. I have not even been able to pay some of the people who were so entirely dependent on that particular project. Let's listen to him. Actually, he never came on, on site since from the beginning, even though the campaign was his. So sometimes, you see, when you look at the directors of the G5 group, he was fronting with other people, putting other people there as if they the companies were else they were controlling, controlling it. Yeah. So basically here in Paris, I was the subcontractor that built all brickworks that you see, all those buildings, I'm the one who built it. Mm. And I feel so, there's nothing that I can point that I've achieved. I have lost everything. They left me with debt. I could not even pay the employees after they have left. Uh, because they could not even finish the, the buildings or the, the project, I can't even upgrade my work at, at the CIDB. Looking at the work that I've done, you know, I should be in about grade nine by so far, but I don't even have a cent in my bank account. Yeah. Oh, that's just not okay. It's just not okay. The minister, while he was on this visit to Perez, he also spoke about the Bite Bridge fence project, which is another absolute yeah. folly, I suppose, is the only way. A, yeah. a fence that was meant to keep uh, unwanted illegal people out of this country yeah. just absolutely useless. What did he say? Yeah, we've been there, Sally. We have seen that the, the fence doesn't exist. It can't stop anyone. In fact, as we were there, we could still see illegal immigrants crossing from the site of the Limpopo River into the site of uh, South Africa. Now, the minister is saying that uh, in terms of holding accountable the businesses or companies that were involved, they remember it cost about 40 million rand, and people have named that particular fence washing line. Now, he says that uh, through the SIU, they are trying to recover about 15 million rand and from those two companies. Internally, he is saying they are busy with uh, the disciplinary processes and he is hoping that uh, the police will expedite their investigation on the side of uh, criminality part of things. Lots to clean up there. Thank you so much for that update. Our reporter Moloko Maloto.